I'm Pastor George Borkhart, and this is another Higher Things video short. Karma, karma, karma. Woke Wednesday takes on karma. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. And donate. Oh, wait, share. Sharing is caring when it's Higher Things content. And donate. Your tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us passing on the faith to the next generation. Keeps us giving that gospel. And we need that gospel in these dark times. It's Wednesday. And Woke Wednesday means that we get to speak with none other than Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also the face that runs the place. How you doing, Erica? I'm doing great. It never gets old, does it? Not for me. I never gets old. They're all the same. Yeah, never gets so, old. So um, today <laughs> you have us uh, talking about karma, 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 chameleon. I, I mean, um, what is karma? A little bit of history, please, on this woke Wednesday and take it away. Sure. I, I chose this one because there's so many songs that you can sing in the middle of this. You're going to have you're going to have fun with this. I'm not going to help you with any of them either. Um, sure. So let's talk a little bit about karma, uh, the history of it first, before we talk about how it's used today. Um, karma essentially means action, I believe, in Hindi. But it, it's a concept. The karma itself is a concept that comes out of um, Hinduism and Buddhism. Um, and it's an action that's seen as bringing upon yourself inevitable results, whether they're good or bad. It can happen in this life or in reincarnation. So the concept of reincarnation is is, is pretty common in Hinduism. Um, and that's sort of how you reach Brahman. Um, but it's the idea that you kind of keep coming back um, as a living being um, after death multiple times until you sort of figure it out. Right. Um, so karma is also, uh, can be defined as the cosmic principle, according to which each person is either rewarded or punished in this life. And it, um, and the idea is that your deeds, um, in the previous life will follow you into this life. So if you were good and created good karma, you'd have good things happening to you in the next life. And, it's true in the reverse too, right? Like if you were a bad dude or a bad person and did bad things, that that karma follows you into the next life. It's sort of your fate or your destiny. Um, so the good or bad emanations can be felt or be generated by someone or something. So it's not just people. Um, it can be places or, or objects as well, right? So like the idea of uh, let's get out of here because this place has bad karma. So it's not necessarily only people. It can be places or things as well. Um, so in, in a nutshell, you can think of karma as the spiritual equivalent of sort of Newton's law of motion. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. Um, so when we are negative, we are a negative force in our thoughts or our actions, there's going to be an equal but opposite reaction to that. And that's the concept of karma. When we exhibit um, something good, you know, we get good energy back. So it's a very sort of transactional view of reality. Karma now, is. Now, uh, how's it used in modern culture today? And why are we talking about it on a woke Wednesday? Sure. So actually, um, I hear it all the time. I, I don't know if you do or not. I hear kids use it. I hear people use it regularly. Um, and it still retains the general idea that you get what you give, meaning you get bad. Uh, if you um, are bad to people, bad things happen to you. If you're nice and kind, you get good karma or good things will happen. So for example, um, like you cheat on a test in school, you will hear a kid maybe say something like, well, they didn't get into their, the college that they wanted to. That's, the, that's their karma because they cheated all the time. Or let's say you are unfaithful to your girlfriend. 
um, and you get cheated on later, that's your karma, right? You deserve that. You get what you deserve. If you bully and oppress other people, you deserve whatever violence comes back on you. Um, I think you can see that kind of sentiment pretty easily in different aspects of our culture. Um, if you volunteer and you help people out and you do good deeds, um, then you're going to be a happy person and, um, lots of good prosperity will come your way. Um, so yeah, so the idea of helping people would produce good karma. Um, not helping people would definitely produce bad karma. So you kind of get what you, it's sort of the idea that you get what you deserve. Um, have you heard that term much faster? Have you heard it? Have you heard your, you say it? Have you heard kids say it? Have you heard adults say it? Yeah. Above, right. Yeah. Um, and that, and that, and, um, yeah. Karma's a bee. Right. I mean, they, they'll yeah, say that. They'll say yeah, that as slogans. like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. you know, like when you get what, what, what's coming to you, there's a lot of shot and yeah. and void involved in it as we're really ex excited yeah. that, uh, shot and is a great yeah. word. It's like, we're rejoicing in other people's suffering. So we're like karma yeah, for other like people. Just love to judge other people, right? Like, yeah. um, and a lot of times I think you'll see that this is used sort of against your neighbor. It's never talking about you. Like, I know I don't hear people say, "Oh, I got the karma I deserved." It's always like, "Oh, they got what was coming to them." It's always about. It always is in the context of what's about your neighbor. But so, what I really want to know, Pastor, is um, what about the Christian faith? What about the Christian worldview? Does it include this concept of karma? Of, of, of sort of this judgment, you get what you deserve, this sort of transactional thing. Is there any place for that in Christianity? Or um, how do we sort of, how do we, how do we in the church uh, think of karma? Uh, this is an Eastern it's a concept. Jesus -y thing. <laughs> no, yeah, this is an Eastern concept. It's, it's not a, a, a Christian concept. So the, 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 the and it presupposes that you're somehow neutral. And that your a actions um, tip the scale either in a plus or a minus. Um, paying it forward while a great thing does not merit favor with God. and doesn't change the course of how things are going to go. Um, the Christian worldview is that God has condemned the world. So if God's going to play the karma game, then everyone gets damned. Everyone. Um because all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So the concept of karma, while it, it, it it's an, it's an, and it's antithetical to the Christian faith because um, if we all get what we deserve, we'll all get hell. But um, in the Christian faith, though, Jesus got what we deserved. I was getting there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You made me think of it. You're that good. Cutting me you off. Got me there without even saying it. Cutting me off. That's the way to that. If you should actually got accidentally get muted later on, it, it, that would be karma. That would be karma, right? Well, really, actually, there's a there's a great example of it. Um, that that's just not cool. Uh, that's not how God deals with us. God does not deal with us as you get what we deserve. You deserve unless that's the way you want to play it with Him. Um, God takes all your sins and all your bad karma and all that you deserve and all, and he, he puts it on his son. So while you were talking to me, I'm thinking, man, if I got what I deserved, holy smokes, uh, my life has lived, um, contrary to what I deserve. God is gracious and merciful to me in Christ, apart from what I deserve, apart from what I've earned, because he's taken all my sins and he's put them on Jesus. And so the, the concept of karma or the idea of karma, um, is antithetical to Christianity. Um, Lazarus isn't, God isn't gracious to Lazarus because he was poor and mean to uh, the rich man because the rich man was rich. God is gracious to Lazarus because Lazarus had nothing other than God to cling to. And the rich man had everything other than God to cling to. So while even where you think that there may be karma in the scriptures, it's really not. If, there, if you a deep dive into it, um, actually, um, actually sort of, uh, uh, demonstrates that, that God runs by law and gospel by you either get what you deserve or you get what Christ deserves. Um, your final thoughts while I take a sip out of this higher things cup, which will be available on our store very soon. Um, higher things.org slash merchandise. You can get from our higher things store, this cup, buy them out. So I went a bet. So while you're summing this up, know that I'm going to be drinking 
cool pop from this from this Higher Things cup. Get it from the Higher Things store. Go ahead. Thanks for the shameless plug. Um, I think it's sort of interesting. I think that um, as you talked, I thought about how in Jesus's day, um, they wanted a Messiah who was going to sort of be the great equalizer. They wanted, um, they wanted the people in charge to not be in charge. They wanted sort of things to be redistributed fairly in favor of Israel. Right. They wanted, they wanted God to kind of come and be, you know, um, be a fair God. Um, and that's kind of, um, what, what I think the idea of karma appeals to us because we want, we, we see these, um, these things going on in the world that aren't fair. Right. And we want, um, things to be made fair. And it's a, a God that our God isn't fair. Um, he, he, he gives to those who don't deserve, um, which is pretty amazing. It's pretty spectacular. And it kind of turns every other religion on, on its head. There's no transaction to it. There's no sort of equality to it. Um, he sort of lavishes on us, uh, on the church and on everyone, the forgiveness of sins, um, the, through the death of his son and the resurrection of his son. So, um, it's really, uh, um, it's really quite amazing, um, that, uh, God knows what's best for us and thanks be to God. It's not karma. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of higher things. Um, a person who, uh, never gets what she deserves always gets the mercy and grace of God. Um, thank you, Erica, for um, taking us on this walk of walk down Karma Lane. No songs? No other songs come to mind? I was thinking about, about singing some... What about Karma's Gonna Get Ya? I was, I was gonna sing Alicia Keys, but... Um, you were just, gonna sing... Wow. I didn't feel it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks. What great gospel. And how very important this is for us and our young people. We want karma for others. We never want it for ourselves. Um, and instead, God, who is rich in mercy, first and foremost, gives us grace in Christ Jesus. He gives us what we don't deserve and gives Christ what we deserve on the cross. And by that sweet swap, we are saved. I'm Pastor George Barker. And this has been another Higher Things video short.